Cringy Dad Gaming. In this video, we'll be taking a look at some of the mechanics from the game Dead Side, and this is mainly to help you new players. If you've not yet watched my video on how to get geared fast, then you might want to watch that first because we are going into this video from that point. So here what we're doing is we're coming across areas where there may be some patrolling scavengers or militia or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> And we are literally just taking these guys out. And the reason why we're wanting to do this is because we want their gear. So we either want the gear that they've got for ourselves or we want to sell it at one of the safe zones. So this guy here has just gone down. If we click on him, so there's this little yellow envelope on his clothing item there. That means he's actually got something in his pocket. So if we click on that item, it will then open that little yellow box allowing us to be able to take those items. What you can also do is right click on the item here with the trousers example. And we can tear them into rounds. Now you might want to have some rags on you in case you need to heal yourself. Once you've teared them into rags, you will then find that you need to use the little ground tab there to be able to look at what's on the ground. That can be quite easily missed early on in the game. So notice this shotgun here shows a little spanner icon on it. When we click on it, it actually means it's got an attachment on it. So when I first started playing the game, I thought it meant that the gun needed repairing. It doesn't. It means it's got a attachment. So you may not want the gun itself, but you may want the attachment on it. So in this instance, I had a torch attachment, which is quite handy for those darker areas. Don't forget, you can also split stacks of things as well. So some things you can only carry a maximum stack of, say, these rags 10. So sometimes it won't allow you to combine those in a stack unless you're combining the right amount. So I had nine in my inventory when I had to split down those two rags. Now what we're doing here is we're picking up the ammo. We don't necessarily need the shotgun ammo, but what we can do is once we've got a stack of 100 ammo, we can sell it at the save zone. Again, most of the things we're doing at the moment in this early part of the game is just finding things that we can sell. And that's purely for the fact that with money, we can buy better gear. And with better gear means more survivability. And in this game, that's what you want, survivability. Starting off in these kind of town and village areas is probably going to be the best thing early on because you're going to come across these scavs that have got no real armor and not very good weapons. Saying that, yes, you know, you are going to get more money for selling better weapons. But if you come across some of these patrols with higher level enemies that have more gear, then you're probably going to struggle, especially if you're like me playing solo. So sometimes early on in the game, it's easy to start with these lower level enemies. Now the AI can sometimes be quite brutal, if you've already played the game you'll know what I mean. They will just rush you most times in groups. They have no real thought for their own life at all, which may need to be changed a little bit once the developer gets some of that feedback, because I just think that's a little bit unrealistic. I think if you've got a guy shooting at you with an AK-47, you're not going to be running around. You're definitely not going to be running straight at him with a, a little pistol to try and kill him, that's for sure. With that said, you just want to make sure that you are using the cover to your advantage, using trees and using the lean ability that your character has to be able to lean left and lean right from behind cover is what you're going to want to do to make sure that you're not getting hit. Because depending on what server you're playing on, the damage in this game is pretty severe. And that's why they call it hardcore. A hardcore PvP and PvE game because one or two hits from a rifle, you're dead. Sometimes you'll almost get one shotted, especially if someone's using a pump shotgun, you're gonna die in one hit pretty much. Here, as I mentioned earlier, about stacking all. So if you right click on items where you've got an odd amount, you can right click and choose stack all on them. It will then maximize the amount of items. So there with the bullets that we had, we could stack into a box of 100. 
You will sometimes come across dog tags on players. These can be sold also in the save zone. It will give you points that you can actually use to spawn in a different location. So if you die, rather than just spawning randomly, you can choose a spawn point, which is usually a safe zone, allowing you to be able to access your storage where you're probably going to have some kit. If you do find yourself running out of inventory space while you're out scavenging, like me here, basically what I've done is just had a look at what my food and drink level is at, and then if you've got food and drink in your inventory, just use it. It'll clear up some space in there, allowing you to pick up more stuff. Sometimes you will find specific items in certain locations. I just picked up a flashlight here, which you can actually keep in your pocket, so don't really take up much space. And that isn't the flashlight I'm using there that I've just picked up. That's the one on my rifle. But that torch that I just picked up would probably sell for about a 650, a 650 in English. And it's definitely worth selling some of those items, even if you don't necessarily need it. But things like this fire axe, they cost about five grand to buy. You don't necessarily really get much if you sell it. But if you want to pick one of those up it will take one of your main weapon slots up so in this instance I didn't want to drop the rifles that I had purely for the fact that I just don't feel it's worth it for that particular item sometimes you will go away and come back and find things have despawned and something else is there instead uh, you will come across things again and it's just all about scavenging going back to your storage and storing things up and, and trying to keep some space for those items if you can so the next time I come back this way I'll probably only come with one weapon so if I do come across say a fire axe I can then literally just sleep it on my back. So in the garage here we're coming across nails. Nails are going to be really handy for if you want to start crafting say your own base or storage boxes and things like that. So in this instance sometimes you may just want to drop some ammo to pick up the nails if like me your inventory is full. It just kind of depends really and you just have to gauge that yourself. You might just want to buy the nails from the store which you can do. Machine oil is also something you can sell and so is rope so I would kind of find these things are worth more than the clothing there because those clothing items you can't sell. You can only sell certain clothing items like hunter vests and stuff like that. The, the normal coats and hats and things like that you can't really sell. If you've got space to pick up lighters, again, do pick them up. You have got these quick slots down at the bottom here, F1, F2, F3 and F4, where you can put things like the lighters and the torches and stuff like that. So just filling that up gives you a little bit of extra space and again, something you can sell at the trader. So here we found a bottle of vodka. Now vodka isn't for drinking in this game, it is pretty much for crafting. So those ranks that we picked up earlier, they don't really give you many health points. However, if you do, say, find something like rubbing alcohol, vodka or moonshine, you can use these alcoholic based liquids to be able to sterilize rags. By sterilizing the rags in the crafting section here and then clicking on medical, you can actually then craft rags that will give you more health points when you use them. So you'll know when you've got enough items because it'll give you a little yellow box saying craft on it. You can, yes, use rags that haven't been sterilized. They won't heal you as much. I know the game doesn't have any disease system in it yet, or it doesn't seem to. In the future, it may be that if you use unsterilized rags that you could get an infection that you may need to find medicine for. But at this stage, it doesn't. It just gives you extra health points. And trust me, with how much damage you can take in this game, you're going to want to combine those vodkas and other alcoholic beverages with the unsterilized rags to get that extra healing. Well, we're just in here. We're just going to have a quick look at the crafting. So you can craft an improvised backpack from rags and rope. You can craft containers with wooden planks and nails. Materials, if you find a wooden log and you've got a saw, you can get certain wooden planks, beams and plywood, which you'll need for crafting. And then obviously in the base building section here, it tells you everything you need to be able to build your bases. So now we've got a little bit of swag. What we're going to do now is we're going to nip off back to our nearest safe zone in order to trade it. Sometimes the runs can seem like they last forever, but luckily enough, the game does have an auto run feature. So by pressing V on the keyboard, if you've not changed any of the keyboard bindings, then you will automatically run, which means sometimes you can just check your messages on your mobile or do whatever, make yourself a cup of tea or something while you're running across the map, although you are at risk of getting shot by someone. But hey, sometimes it's a long old way. You might just want to risk it. 
So in your trading zones, you've got a couple at the moment. I know the full map isn't unlocked yet. As you can see when we zoom out, it's quite a big area, but a lot of it is inaccessible at the moment. But within this smaller map area that we've got for early access, there is two main trading areas. Here you've got lockers where you can store up some items. Shows here on the left hand side. And here you'll know if you can sell it to this trader because it'll have a little strip at the top of the item with the amount of cash you're going to get for it. Once you've got your cash and you've got it in your inventory don't forget to put it in your storage in case you die and lose it last thing you want to do is be losing cash right click and choose sell to be able to sell these items here so some traders will only buy specific items this guy here will buy weapons and ammo off us the other guy will really only buy just general stuff like the watches and stuff that we were finding he will buy ammo, as I mentioned earlier, but they'll only buy them in stacks of 100. If we've got some that are a little bit less, but we've got a few in our inventory, we can do what I've mentioned earlier, and that's just put them into your inventory and then choose to stack them by stack all. We'll then put them to 100 and then give us the option then to be able to sell it. These guys also have a really good selection of things to buy. This guy here has a decent amount of weapons and clothing items as well as ammunition if you've got the money for it. The other guy will have tools and food and drink and healing items such as bandages. So one thing I like about this game is you will get missions. They vary in difficulty. They'll come up as these red kind of dots on the map. This particular mission here just consists of going to the location, killing all the enemies. It will then allow us to have access to a box, which usually has a weapon, ammo and some cash, which varies depending on which difficulty you do it on. But trust me, even the easy ones can be quite difficult even on your own. There is a chance you might die, but if you do die, don't worry too much because as in most of the games that are like this type of game, if you die, you can go back to your body and loot your items from your own corpse. However, just bear in mind that that dead body on the floor is open to anyone else being able to loot the items from your dead body. However, this is where your points that you got reputation points from getting those dog tags and selling them means that sometimes you're able to choose a more appropriate spawn to be able to get back to your dead body quicker. Being super sneaky when you go back to your body is really, really important. Like We just get back to our body here to be able to get our stuff. And there will be sometimes enemies still in the area if you've not killed them all. Like this guy here, he literally just casually walks past me. He's not seeing me, luckily enough, because he's uh, blind. But yeah, there you go. If you are to die more than once, again, your body will stay there in the area along with your other fresh spawn body. So it's not like when you die, if you then die again, that your original body with all your gear on it's not going to still be there. It will be. So there you go, guys. Just a few beginner's tips which might get your head around some of the mechanics of Dead Side. If you've got any questions about the game or about anything you've come across in the game, don't forget to pop that in the comments. Also, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you'd like to see more Dead Side content from me. And just watch this space for more videos. So I'll catch you guys on another video. And thanks for watching. You're ready for this. Yo, who's the daddy?